Hello, boys and girls, my name is Hotsasty and welcome back to Factorio. Uh, last time uh, we scaled vertically two of our yellow um, science pack factories. Uh, we did not do all, all three of them uh, because we run into power issues. Well, at the moment we are goodish, but we are also not researching anything, so that has an impact. So, first things today, we need more power. And I quite like this layout, it's quite symmetrical. Um, so, we could basically double up and have an octocore reactor but i think that would take away from the nice symmetry that we have here with four reactors however what i want to try is if we can reach here from from the corner uh, with roboports and not need the, the belts in here uh, because then we can have true symmetry but we have to see if uh, the the range of the rope ports are enough if we place them out here on the corners but first things first i need a few materials um, uh, Probably four reactors, uh, 48 uh, heat exchangers, uh, 96 uh, turbines, a lot of pipes, a lot of, uh, um, a lot of uh, tanks, or oh, tanks and pipes, not that big a deal, um, but let me gather the material and then we can see how we can build up that that reactor and get double the power or almost double the power because we still have a bit of power from coal so it's not completely double the power i have almost all the ingredients that we will need um, and good thing is that if we check with a rubber port placed here in the corner you can see the uh, orange area covers the whole reactor even if we only have one rubber port on on one side so next question is where do we want to place it and I am thinking we will place it in the water because that makes life easy pumping water in wherever we need it then we don't need to have these pipes going all around to uh, where we want them um, but I have a suspicion that this will not be enough land filled. So basically this is what I will not have enough of. So let's go a bit out here and as mentioned we will have the same design and we don't need the belts but here instead of the belts we will have um, we will have uh, chests so the distance between the reactor and the outside will be the same and in order to keep it symmetrical uh, let's also have uh, well it's not symmetrical anyway because here we have a, a two space gap here we have only a one space gap so 
maybe we can bring in the sides one closer uh, and uh, then deal with that but I think uh, the easiest way to do it is uh, use this copy that I made and basically go from uh, this side uh, maybe here towards the, the middle uh, and then we can measure this out so we can plan out uh, all the area that we have to landfill. Well, I will hop out a bit more into the water and then also in this direction before filling in uh, a big chunk of land. Um, if we take this if we take this to here that's then basically we're touching the, the, the shore uh, on that side and that's not what we want uh, we want rather something like the uh, west side being here on on this level so we need a bit more but then I think we are there uh, are we far enough out that's the, the next question yes that works so if I then grab all the landfill and fill in here from this side and we will make this a bit bigger for that part. So let's take this one and place it so that we have the undergrounds on the island plus one. Yeah, we will we will need the uh, stations there as well but we don't need these ones and probably we can move that part here so we don't need that We will need uh, requested chests for and we will need we can use buffer chests and buffer chests will be like that and the request of chests will be like that um like that right And then we can start to fill in all the other pieces. That are missing here. And also expand the 
island here on the, the side. And that's all the all the landfill. So if we then go about and say let's copy this part here. That's where that goes. And we can see we will need quite a bit more landfill to, to complete this. <coughs> and we also need a bit here in the corner because for symmetry reasons I want to have a, a robot port in each of the, of the four corners. And most of the things we can just copy uh, only here where we have this going on. we have one space with the uh, with the pipe and then we have two for the belts so here we should be able to, to squeeze in these uh, these tanks that we have placed on the side I managed to put everything in here we have the water connected here on each side we have the robot ports they are connected uh, to the network uh, up here going all the way to here where we can deliver used cells we can pick up uh, fresh cells um, all but we are missing are a few robots in there and there they are flying uh, to get the uh, the cells that we need here and uh, once we have supplied the, the fuel cells we should get uh, quite a bit more power um, from these two reactors in fact we should probably uh, double the amount I think one quad core reactor if memory serves right that's uh, 480 megawatts the rest that's that's our coal power so we see the reactors are heating up uh, once that has happened uh, we should also see the 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 turbines going on and then we can turn our attention to what we actually want to do in this episode uh, not sure how much we will accomplish in the in the remaining time um, we do have uh, 200 degrees I think we yeah we need 500 so we are about halfway there almost um, but what we actually want to do here is put a few more modules into uh, our um, production facilities we have upgraded two yellow ones one is remaining and then we want to repeat that process uh, for purple so I think last time we have seen how the upgrade for yellow works 
So I will cover the last one and then we can have a look at how we achieve that feed for the for the for the purple signs as well. The upgrade for purple should be pretty simple. We do the same for our smelting arrays, beacon them up, productivity in there, uh, then the same thing for the actual uh, science factories, upgrading the assemblers, putting productivity in there, beacon around it, so we compensate for the lost speed we get for productivity. And then we will see uh, which ingredients we need to pimp in order to, uh, to keep up with the demand for the production. I would guess probably uh, the uh, green circuits, um, maybe red circuits, uh, stone and uh, the uh, uh, electric furnace, but we will see. So let me get ahead and uh, just take the first steps before we uh, go too much into guesswork just right now. With these upgrades done, we can see the first bottleneck is rails here. So let's upgrade here. I don't think I can, yeah, don't can, can't add productivity in there, but we can add a few more beacons around it. That should help. And then, of course, we can also have speed in here. Um, speed this part up. And maybe have stack inserters for output. That produces enough rails so it goes to the to the last factory but then we can see we don't have any furnaces left so that's the next thing that we have to upgrade no productivity in there so let's add the other thing that we can add um, speed and speed beacons and we have pimped this this whole thing this whole smelting array we had to sacrifice one beacon here in the middle for a substation so we can get power for the inner row of of those beacons and Hopefully that will be enough steel for what we need here. Um, but we can see stone is a bit uh, on the slow side. Um, so productivity there. And then have two beacons per Per furnace that of course need power that should get us enough stone and yeah that's looking better but then we can also see here the uh, we are not producing enough red circuits so let's upgrade here um, it's probably the belts. Oh, and I did not upgrade this setup here. So let's first switch out the underground. And then we can do the whole rest. And 
open this up. Power here and on the auto side as well, and productivity in the furnaces and speed in the beacons. Then we want to have this here going is productivity and this should be red belt Actually here we need a bit more more speed Here on, on the outside, that's two each. We can have this and speed it up. But yeah. The wires are backing up and then in here I think one speed module each because in here we just don't have the space for beacons around it as we have two belts going on the outside so the closest uh, a beacon could get is three away and that's out of range for the beacon. Oh. That should get us a bit more red circuits. Uh, now we don't have enough uh, uh, plastic. We did have, yeah, this set up here. We can have this going there. That's how we did it. Yeah, we did uh, productivity in there and then have the, have the speed beacons rounded for compensation. That doesn't look good. All machines here are working. We still have red modules or red uh, circuits coming through here. Um, of course, it could be better. If we just speed this up a bit more, then have a stack insert there. That should help. And yeah, we can see the stone is backed up. Um, we could do with a bit more uh, steel but I guess there's nothing we can do on the rail side we are backed up here this this uh, backup line is shrinking um, but we can do this and here we probably do not need 
uh, four speed modules because we just don't have the, the materials, the input materials for it. But that this should be good. And if we look at our production, uh, let's have the purple and the yellow show up. We don't want this. So now we can see that we're producing more purple than yellow. And uh, beforehand, it was the other way around. The, the yellow was always above the, the, the purple. So, and we only have upgraded uh, one lot of three. So, uh, I can go about and do the, uh, the other two and that should give us a real boost. Of course, uh, the stipulation is always we need to have the input material because otherwise the whole factory will stand still. But I think this is where we leave off this episode and uh, we will see uh, what we will tackle next time. Until then, goodbye!